move on to our final topic, uh, which we're talking about gaming mistakes and which ones were properly fixed. Paul, do you want to take yeah. this one? Yeah, I'll take it away. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk more about a broad topic and kind of get your guys' experience with the biggest gaming mistakes you've uh, you've all had. So I'm bringing this up because I play Magic the Gathering as my main game. And uh, not okay. too long ago, they made, uh, I think they made the biggest mistake creating this mechanic called companion and and i know not everyone here plays card games so i'm gonna keep it as simple as possible don't worry thank you thank <laughs> yeah. you Wait, so, I'm so playing basically oh nice yeah so uh companions were basically a creature that would start in your opening hand as long as your deck met a certain deck building restriction for example uh it could be like all the cards in your deck have to have a different name right and if every card in your deck had a different name you would start the game off with um that companion in your hand so at first, a lot of people, including myself, were like, oh, changing your whole deck just to gain one extra card, like, that's whatever, right? Um, but people were, including myself, we were completely wrong. And it was extremely powerful for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, it completely broke uh, a fundamental rule of the game, which is that when you play a card game, when you start it off, every both players start with the same number of cards, which is seven, right? Mm -hmm. And what this meant is that before the game even started, um, if my opponent had a deck with uh, a companion and I didn't, they would have eight cards to start. I would have seven. I would already be at a disadvantage before the game even started, right? Mm -hmm. So number two, uh, consistency. So in card games, uh, it's supposed to be random, right? That's the whole point of card games. When you draw a card, it's supposed to be random. And you're supposed to start the game off with seven random cards. But if your opponent had a companion and you didn't, their deck would be more consistent because they would always have a companion to start the game. The same card, right? So... Um, it's 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 complicated because once players start to realize how strong this uh, this mechanic was, everyone started to play companions. And I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. If you first okay. up best decks in Magic right now, every one of them would have a companion. And it created this boring, repetitive metagame that pushed a lot of players out um, for at least a month or two. So, mm -hmm. how do they fix it? Well. In the end, they had to completely change um, the rules. And they said that in order to put it in your hand, you need to pay a certain amount of resources, and then you could play it. And it was a good change. But um, for me, it was hard, because unlike a game like Hearthstone, Magic has both a paper and a digital product, right? So yeah. it, ha it creates this big change. And um, um. personally, like I think that um, as much as I love the R&D team exploring a bunch of new uh, mechanics and all that stuff, I think focusing on the balance thing would have been uh, a much more sought out aspect I would want the game devs to focus on. So I guess it sparked the topic in my head where um, I know everyone here plays a variety of different video games. So I wanted to spark a conversation and hear your guys' thoughts on some of the, video, the biggest video game mistakes you've experienced and uh, how they fixed it. So. Yeah, I think there's there's one that's like one of the the biggest topics that that I feel like just just saying it you'll immediately know exactly what I'm talking about when I mention Star Wars Battlefront two. Uh, um, yes, one of one of the <laughs> most like what a disaster this game was coming out. Um, the, the microtransactions that were involved, the 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 business practices of essentially the ability to just pay to win get everything that you want all the upgrades all the all the heroes or the villains that you want through these loot boxes that were available in the game and it was getting to the point where they were mentioning stuff on reddit and they were trying to kind of provide reasoning as to why they did what they did and i think the like single most downvoted comment in reddit history is yeah. the comment from one of the developers <laughs> at EA, who's yeah. trying to explain why they were doing what they were doing with star wars battlefront 2 and well i don't think I mean, may maybe I'm not the best equipped to to provide this part of the answer, but I don't think the game like essentially fully recovered to the point where it was like, this is a massive success now and everyone loves this game because there were a lot of people where because of that, that launch, because of what they did from the get-go, they checked out, they were gone and they never came back. But there were definitely a couple of friends of mine who, who were very big very big Star Wars fans, like huge Star Wars fans. And there was clearly no way that they were going to get rid of the game regardless of the shady business practices. So they stuck with it. And now they tell me that there's a healthy player base. Tons of content has been added to the game for free. They've definitely fixed up the whole loot box system and, and, and the grind within that and the microtransactions and everything. So that's not as 
absolutely ridiculous as it was. So there was the there was a pretty nice redemption story for Star Wars Battlefront 2. It felt like still that the damage was done. Yeah. But I think towards the end of the cycle of the game, when they had just released their last DLC, I think I, I don't remember exactly when it happened, but pretty recently when they released their last DLC, I think actually it was with um with the Rise of Skywalker coming out. What a disaster that movie was. Um and so they released that movie. They put out their last piece of like free content for Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I think like at the end of that game's run, it's a solid game now with a ton of yeah. content available in it. And if you were to buy it now, I think there's quite a bit of fun that you can have out of it as compared to what it was at its launch. Another game that I think of too at the top of my head is like Rainbow Six. Is it Siege? The newest yeah, one? Rainbow Six. Um, yeah. Another disaster at launch seemed dead on arrival. Feel it felt like nobody was gonna play it, and that was just kind of it for the game. And then all of a sudden, it gets this cult following. Ubisoft is taking in all this feedback, and they're implementing it into their game. And now yeah. it's one of the biggest esports out there. It's it's yes. that's yeah. awesome. Fast, that's cool yeah, to see stuff like that. I think it's one like of the that. fastest growing uh, esports out there. Yeah. yeah, they they really. I feel like in uh, Siege, that case is also the marketing wasn't necessarily all there. For that, mm -hmm. I think a lot of gamers were trying to figure out, well, I play COD or I play CSGO. Why Why would I play Siege, right? Like, it didn't right. have that, um, you, it wasn't marketed as being, you know, as unique uh, to really drive you away from those games or open up your eyes to playing this experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, those are really two good ones. For me, I think immediately No Man's Sky <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah what right, a wreck right. it was that right um <laughs> no man's sky was just it looked so beautiful before it came out it, mm -hmm. you had high hopes you were like oh i'm gonna be able to go to all these different worlds and every yeah. experience is gonna be different this is crazy <laughs> let's do this then you get the game oh, and it's like wait what none of those <laughs> things are in the game and you have the devs are like yet they're not in the game yet yes. And it, it just yeah. really no, um, hit not. the community because then there was like very, there was no trust um, that gamers had with N No Man's Sky and the creators behind it because you're just thinking, Weren't they well. they being investigated too? Because like yep, they potentially false. lied about the <laughs> multiplayer aspect of it and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. The, they pretty much were selling the game based on what they expected they were hoping the game would be but it didn't really actually represent the game at launch so yeah. i feel like i think what happened was there was a few like gamers that did civil suits against them um mm -hmm. or had like their board i don't know what it is in america but um like their board kind of represent uh, like their marketing or advertisement board kind of do a full investigation on how the game was marketed how far yeah. off were they from um selling you know this product was it accurate yeah. to the launch and it, it just it just wasn't right but now like i fell off that like i after hearing the horror stories and trying it at launch i was like yeah this i'm never ever gonna do that again but my friend like he plays all the time and loves it like it's now built itself where it oh and the thing is they weren't really responding to the community at launch uh, like how disappointed they were um so I'm now sure. they're much more commu <laughs> community involved they implemented a lot of the things that the game promised at launch but it's been how many years since they do that and now yeah. no man's sky is like one of those experiences if you talk to someone who plays it they love it right and it makes me want to play it but i'm when i'm burned i'm burned it takes me a while to get back and trust them, right? Uh, yeah. And then Fallout seventy six would be the other obvious hit, and I don't even Is know if it's fixed yet. There, yeah. It's just it just <laughs> sucks. Fallout? Fallout, kind of the same thing, was marketing itself as you're going to be able to do all of these different things in the Fallout universe, have your own vault, True. and then um, and also a get like free in the game. Like, yeah, what <laughs> they they put all these different elements that just it didn't feel like a Fallout game. It you weren't able to interact with your friends as they promised you um so again it was like mis selling what the game actually yeah. was plus they yeah. put out really really bad pre-order packages like if you pre-ordered you get a i think it was a fallout like 76 bag um and it was like oh. really cool yeah you remember the bag yeah um but it was yeah. really really <laughs> low quality and like broke <laughs> oh no it was bad it was, oh, and, it then was they, and then they added no that game that game's had some pretty bad press for a while then they added like a subscription service thing for the yes. game even though it's oh, not oh, a free to play wow. game oh, and oh man no there's it i don't think that game's bounced back just yet but maybe wait well they wait another five years maybe maybe 
Yeah. <laughs> we'll return to the topic. We'll return. Yeah. To the topic. We'll return to it. <laughs> um, to kind of go back to like how Paul originally um, like introduced this topic, something that came to mind for me was actually like League of Legends rank system. So, I mean, is everyone in here like familiar with League of Legends? It's like, no. a, yeah, well, I am. <laughs> it's like a 5v5 game, right? You have five, five players on each team. Um, right, so right, right. pretty much when you play ranked, you would think that there should normally there is a, a solo queue and a duo queue. So maybe you can play mm-hmm. with one other person and then mm-hmm. you get random teammates against random uh, enemies. I think yeah. like in like two two or three years ago, uh, Riot decided to change the rank system to be that you can queue up with as many people as you want. So you can face like a five stack team that's like communicating with each other as oh. someone on the other end just being solo. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why... That is so stupid. Why would yeah. they do that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no what? idea why they did that. I think they wanted to like cater to a more um, like, uh, casual players. But still, even then, it felt like really weird to the integrity of the game, especially in a rank system. And yeah. I think today, even though this was like three or four years ago, people are still seeing the effects of it. Like People's ranks are kind of skewed. They've tried to do all these things. Like... Um, so you know, you know, they have like iron, silver, gold, and that like going up the ranks. They've had to incorporate like new ranks to kind of make up for people's um, they call it ELO, like our MMR matchmaking rating system. Um, so they have they've had to implement like new ranks. I think next season they're trying to do they're trying to change it up again and make it so there's no promotional series. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I hope I don't just sound like <laughs> like completely foreign words, but. To me, like when you say that, then it made me really think about that. Like, oh wait, it, they called the dynamic queue. Um, mm-hmm. That actually really messed up a lot of things for like years. Mm-hmm. But people still play the game very avidly. I do, as mm-hmm. frustrating as it is. So it's like they kind of got away with it still. Well, and that's the thing. I feel like yeah. when these games come out at launch, or when they you get your hands on them and they're not what you expect them to be, does it really hurt? the studios um you know obviously you have those extreme cases of like no man's sky or yeah. like fallout 76 but like does it really hurt the studio because we all bought it anyways <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> um yeah. yes it hurts them on the reputation end but then should and i'm saying this because i don't believe in this but i'm trying to play devil's advocate mm-hmm. should just studios put out crappy games to kind of win you over over the years and make it better you know what i mean <laughs> I feel like Ubisoft does that. I feel like Ubisoft is like notorious for that. <laughs> that is definitely <laughs> something you've seen a lot that Ubisoft has done. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's something that eventually we're going to see happen with Anthem as they're like currently in that yeah. phase of literally overhauling the entire game. I hope that this is not something that ends up being the case for the Avengers game. I hope that yeah. game just comes like if the game comes out at launch and it's just good and it can end up being great, then okay. Like I, I'm fine with that. But you obviously, you don't want to see a game, and I don't think developers ever want to make a game that is with the strict purpose of being bad with the attempt at trying to develop it over time and make it good. Because obviously you want to sell the game at the get-go, and you want to try and have as many people playing from the start, and then hopefully continue to build from there. That's what you see with games like, you know, you're, you're free to play Battle Royales like Fortnite or Warzone, right? Yeah. Like, they, mm-hmm. they're... They're just fun at launch and they get a massive player base because of that. And then they continue to update the game and add new features and, you know, listen to player feedback and make the game just better and better and better to get that player base to grow larger and larger. So I don't think any developer out there, their goal is to like, let's make a bad game. What do you guys well, think? Well, yes, like, no, but I think it's amazing, you know, like I do. Nobody- I, obviously, they don't want to put out a bad game, but sometimes um, these studios could be really ambitious with what they want to yes. do because they want a long, a game that's going to have um, service to it for a long period of time something you know like the avengers game now when you look at square enix and like their the triple a titles that they put out i I believe that they could do this right but when you have Mm -hmm. some studios that aren't necessarily used to doing that or this is their first venture into that um i think that's when you kind of run the risk of it's not going to be great when it, it first comes out because they either have a small team or they, they don't have too the ambitious. Cap- exactly. Yeah. Um, they don't have the experience to actually fully roll this out to where we would want it to be um, playing it for the first time. Mm-hmm. I think ambition is good though. I think having a lot of ambition is actually solid. I think the thing is, is that companies need to um, start, 
putting ambition with transparency side by yes. side. You know what I mean? Like, True. I think that's the number one thing. Like being, like giving constant updates, like listening to feedback and actually responding to like comments and what players want. I think that's important for any game to grow, not just to have big ambitions and then go silent when they don't deliver, right? So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I think if in all those cases that we've mentioned, if they were a bit transparent of like, look, we're rolling this out, however, we know it's a work in progress. I think a lot of people would be more receiving of that mm -hmm. initial work, right? Um, rather than just putting it down right away. If And we see that with Kickstarters. We see that with a bunch of games that start out as like a com just an idea and they release like the alphas there or was the betas. An idea. Yeah, there was an idea. Um, and they, they put these out hoping to grow something, but they make it very clear from the beginning that this is kind of like a community project because they understand the community is well invested into the goal, the vision of what it can be. And kind of to even circle back to one of our other topics of like uh, with the, was it the uh, state of state of PlayStation? State what was play? it called? State yeah, of play, state of, the state play. of play is like because um, <laughs> I was gonna ask Paul on like what he thinks is the best way for companies and communities to like stay like in the know with each other so that they can like create their game to be the best they can be, especially competitively. Mm. Um, so I, I feel like having those like the state things like the state of play kind of opens up the conversation for everyone so that companies mm -hmm. can look at them too and kind of understand where to go from there. Yeah. Mm. But I guess that's a that's a really wholesome and positive way of looking at it. <laughs> and, well, so. I feel like you're always going to have, no matter what, even if, you know, like the state of play, if the company is very transparent on what you should expect, you're going to yeah. have people that will always be disappointed. Like that right. is that is the inherent nature of everything. Right. Internet. You're going to you can't you yeah. can't make everyone happy. Yeah. The Internet definitely um, can't make Caboose happy unless you're no, Spider you can't <laughs> unless <laughs> Spider-Man's in it. He won't be happy if you show it or if you can take a dump while you play it, then I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. Those are the two check marks to make Caboose happy. But one and two. We, it's not that easy, Caboose, to make number everyone one or happy. Number, two. Yeah. <laughs> number one and number two. Uh, yeah, how do we end, end? How do we keep ending up back here? I don't, I don't know yeah. why. Uh, I'm blaming you on this one, Camille. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never again. Um, but yeah, like I feel like you can't make everyone happy, but I think there's it, you have more trust in to that, those companies or those developers. Um, publishers that are putting out this news if they are transparent you have to kind of give them props whether you are disappointed by the news or or happy about it you just have to give them props for that so i think we're all on the same page with this one mm -hmm. yeah i, I think so yeah uh those are i think uh natuk says i could get a phd on how many times riot blundered their golden goose damn <laughs> dang we made a lot of Harsh. mistakes huh yeah. yeah, but I mean, I guess now it doesn't really matter with League because League isn't their only game now. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Oh my god, doing pretty well. That, that fight. They got a game fighting game on the way. Oh, fighting games on the way. Yes. Um, I think Runeterra seems like it's doing okay. TFT seems like it's doing pretty good. Actually, speaking so. of Runeterra, one of the things I really liked and what everyone can do, I think, mm -hmm. is um, a lot of uh, game devs are actually taking a part in the Reddit conversation. Like, I'm a big user of Reddit. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things is that if game developers are actually taking the time to respond to people's comments in Reddit and yeah. actually like staying active, I think what everyone can do is just kind of remain positive. I think it's natural for people who play video games to naturally just bash on video games whenever they don't like something. Yep. I think if you really like a game, like, and you're on Reddit, like, and your game devs are trying to help out and try and support your game, like, be patient, be calm. And like, uh, again, it right, goes so. back, like I said, no game dev want, like, nobody sits in an office and they're like, all right, guys. Let's make this <laughs> yeah. game terrible. I got an epic prank. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's make this game terrible. What do you guys think? Millions of dollars for you know? this prank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the, nobody does that. So so when you're out there and you're like, screw you for making a bad game, you idiot. It's like, okay, take it easy. I think there's I think there's just always a positive. Like there's always a way where we can provide feedback, even if it's something that you just don't like. You know, yeah. if there is something that I don't like, I'm not just going to hate it unless there are some like very clearly like terrible, stupid things in it. But I also would like it's just constructive criticism goes a very long way in comparison to somebody who's just yelling at you, yeah. you know, and, like, and so it, yeah. Just, just, yeah, just be patient with these devs. Mm -hmm. Just provide your feedback. 
be nice about it, be kind, and I'm sure you'll get a response in return saying, hey, thanks for your feedback, rather than getting blocked. Uh, those are definitely words to live by. Great advice there. And it all just comes back to in order to shape what we want in the video game community, we have to properly vocalize what we want and mm -hmm. be just good people. Don't be a crappy person. Okay. Everyone's here to try to make the community better because they love it. So don't, don't be crappy. That's the lesson of the day. Don't, don't be, be crappy. a crappy person. Here we go. Back, back to that, huh? <laughs> Always circle don't be back. a crappy person Wait, taking a crap okay no one likes that <laughs> double craps no one wants that uh, anyways guys today's conversation definitely took a turn many times although we tried to turn it back the other way it just keeps coming back to this so i think it's time that we just end it for today uh mm -hmm. paul it was so great of you to have us joining us Thank where can me. Everyone find you, and is there a new article that uh, you're working on right now that we should look out for on the website? Yeah, I'm actually working a bunch on Riot's new card game, Legends of Runeterra. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for deck guides or anything of those sorts, you can check it out on Squad. And uh, I have all my handles at Brother CCG. So yeah. All and right, yeah. that's awesome. That, and that's at squad uh, squadstate.com, just for those of you that were asking. Alex Caboose, it's always a great time. Uh, Caboose, what do you have coming up this week? Oh boy. Uh, well, we got the <laughs> Avengers beta coming up next week for Xbox and PC pre-order and it's going open on PlayStation. And then I'm literally just going to continue counting down the seconds until DC fandom. Um, so if you want to check me out, fanboying about all that stuff, it's at Caboose EK on Twitter and Instagram, youtube.com slash Caboose, twitch.tv slash Caboose. And then also right here on squad. You just word it so well. I love your, yeah, you I'm just really so do. good at this. I'm just you're, you're, you're you're right. too. <laughs> All right, I'll speak and you like lip sync it. <laughs> All right, Alex, here we go. Here we go. Alex, what do you have coming out? Wait, are, we, are we doing it? Yeah, yeah, do, it, do, do right. it. Do it. You you can find me. <laughs> Oh my god, that was that was that was that was, no, that was that was really bad. Never again, <laughs> never again. Guys, I had trust, I had faith we'll in you. We'll pre-record something for the next okay. week. We'll practice. Yeah, it was yeah, 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 yeah. practice, yeah. practice every single day. But Alex, uh, where can everyone find you and what do we have coming up this week? Um, I mean, if anyone wants to be miserable with me on League of Legends, <laughs> I stream pretty much every day, uh, kind of at random hours at twitch.tv slash radpuppy. And then since I don't really have a schedule, if you want to know when I'm going to stream, ch definitely check me out on Twitter at FeelsRadMan. I'm going to stream this week as well on our Twitch right here at okay. Squad State. Okay. You're like, oh yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> 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 and that, that is going to be Saturday and Sundays from 1 to, is it 1 to 5? I keep getting this uh, time wrong. For me, it's 11 to 3. <laughs> okay, is, what? Two to uh, three. One, one yeah. to six. No, two to six. Two to six. Two to six. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this was on it. There we go. Two to six. <laughs> uh, you can catch Alex right here, Squad State, streaming some league. Maybe I'll have to hop in with you and just give it a try. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. I'll be streaming tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to try Fall Boy for the first time. Uh, tomorrow, so you can guys, you mean? Fall guys, Fall guys. Oh, maybe I'll come through too. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was. I guess I was thinking Fallout Boy. I had. I've heard. <laughs> of, I've heard of this game. I didn't want to try it till I try it for the first time right here. So I'm going to do that tomorrow from 12 to 4, and then as well on Wednesday, I'll I'll probably be streaming more of that 12 to 4 as well. So make sure you tune in. Remember, you get all the updates um, for Squad in general at Squad State on Twitter. Social media is everywhere, as well as the website. We really appreciate all of you guys watching. Uh, you guys just, you guys just know stuff in chat. You guys know don't, stuff, don't they? They just know things, and uh, we really appreciate that. So if you if you know any topics that we should talk about next week, hit us up on social. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Yes. Bye.